हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे टॉपिक इज रिविजन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट्स फॉर द एंड सेम एग्जामिनेशन आई विल बी रिवाइजिंग सम इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स बेसिक टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू यूनिट नंबर थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स द बेसिक थिंग इज दैट देर आर सो मेनी डायग्राम्स इन दिस सब्जेक्ट स्पेशली यूनिट नंबर फोर एंड फाइव but i will tell you simple tricks so that you can memorize all the diagrams along with that i will tell you the simplified approach to solve the numericals related to some important topics so without wasting the time let us start the session unit number 3 is voltage regulator as the name indicates the function of voltage regulator is to provide regulated output voltage that means constant output voltage this is the block diagram of voltage regulator at the input side we are applying single phase ac circuit everyone knows the standard value of single phase ac voltage is 230 volt initially we are using step down transformer to simply step down the available uh, voltage then output of step down transformer is given to rectifier rectifier usually is a, a bridge rectifier or full wave rectifier in case of bridge rectifier you are getting the output like this this is known as pulsating dc signal then we are connecting the filter different types of filters are used which are l that is inductive filter capacitive filter then lc filter and so on output of filter will be a smooth output but it will be again in the form of pulses basically the filter is used to cancel out the ripples still the output is not constant it is not dc then this output of filter is applied to the voltage regulator circuit throughout this unit we will be discussing the different uh, uh, concepts of voltage regulator uh, circuit the output of voltage regulator is ideally a constant dc voltage so the output is like this it remains constant but in practical cases there are few variations uh, as far as the output of voltage regulator is concerned this is the block diagram of voltage regulator circuit you should know this block diagram as well as its functioning just now i explained the working of this block diagram now there are four important parameters related to voltage regulations the definitions are uh, really important first is load regulation it is change in output voltage when il is changed what is il at the output i am supposed to connect certain load for example i am connecting the load resistance rn so output of voltage regulator is given to uh, some load rl then change in output voltage when il is changed what is il the current which is flowing through the load is denoted by il so if il is changed this load current is changed then there will be change in the output of this voltage regulator from 0 to maximum value 0 means no load you are not connecting anything at the output that is 0 and maximum means you are connecting a full load at the output so this is known as voltage re uh, load regulation lr it is given in terms of percentage so percentage lr is v no load minus v full load divided by v full load into 100 next parameter is line or source regulation it is sr source regulation so it is change in regulated voltage due to change in line voltage what is this line voltage line voltage means the supply voltage which is 230 volt we know that in practical cases the available voltage at our home is 230 volt plus or minus uh, 10 so uh, this is the again ideal case there are again uh, many variations in the line voltage this is known as the line voltage so the change in regulator voltage due to change in line voltage if this line voltage input voltage itself will change output of the regulator will change this is denoted by line or source regulation next is output resistance the ratio of change in output voltage to the change in load current il so delta v0 is the change in output voltage it is the ratio of change in output voltage to the change in load current il and last definition is last parameter is ripple rejection that is rr dash simple definition it is the ratio of v ripple at the output that means the, there are certain ripples in the output voltage so it is the ratio of ripples contained in the output voltage to the ripples contained in the input voltage this is known as ripple rejection ratio next in our syllabus we have a voltage regulator ic that is lm317 
as I said, this is voltage regulator IC which produces the current output current more than 1.5 amperes and its voltage range is 1.2 volt to 37 volt. It is adjustable regulated voltage means you can obtain any voltage between 1.2 volt to 37 volt. This is the block diagram of IC LM317. How, the, how this works? It's very simple. These two transistors, this is known as a Darlington pair of a transistor. Now there is one internal reference voltage which is used in this IC. This internal reference voltage is applied to the comparator. The other another input to this comparator is directly from the output side. So comparator compares the available output with internally uh, generated reference voltage and accordingly an error signal is generated which depends on the difference between these two values. This error signal decides whether to switch on this Darlington pair or switch off the Darlington pair. There is one register which is shown in the diagram which is R limit register. This is a limiting register which is directly proportional to the current passing through the load. So depending on the current passing through the load, the voltage across this will change and accordingly the Darlington pair will be switched on and off. This decision is taken by the protection circuit. So as the load current changes, voltage drop across this will change. Accordingly, protection circuit gives the proper signal and uh, if the value of IL increases beyond a certain limit, then protection circuit provides the signal to the Darlington pair, this Darlington pair, and it will be switched off. Thus, the IC317 will be protected. This is the general working of, uh, general block diagram of IC regulator LM317. This is for the positive voltage regulator. The same IC is used for the negative voltage regulation. If from the exam point of view, if the block diagram of negative voltage regulator is asked, what are the changes you need to make? Just remember the same diagram. What do you need to do? Here, write terminal number one, which is adjustable terminal. Terminal number one, this in the circle, I have written terminal numbers. It is adjustable terminal. This is output terminal. So interchange input and output terminal. So I will write terminal number two here, which produces output. And here terminal number three, which produces input. Accordingly, make the changes in the diagram. So that will be the diagram. That means these things you will have to draw at the downward side and so on. So this that will be the diagram for negative voltage regulator. But usually positive voltage regulator are uh, applicable in common appliances. Now let us solve the numerical. Do remember the numericals on LM317 are pretty simple. So don't skip this part. Only one formula is required. Consider the question. Calculate range of output voltage for the circuit diagram given in the question. This diagram will be given in the question. There are three terminals which are shown in the diagram. One is input terminal whose voltage is 40 volt. Output terminal, we have to calculate the range of output voltage at the output terminal. The third terminal is adjustable terminal. Two registers are shown. R1 is fixed register having 240 ohms value. R2 is a variable resistance. This sign indicates it is a variable resistance. So if you change this value of R2 accordingly, the uh, this uh, the supply given to this uh, adjustable terminal will change and output of this IC will vary in the range 1.2 volt to 37 volt. How to do the calculations? You need to remember two things. One is I adjustable, current adjustable A, is 50 micro amperes. These are the standard values. And reference, V reference, that means this reference voltage, which is internally generated reference voltage, is 1.25 volt. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the you need to remember only one formula of uh, output voltage, that is V reference in the bracket 1 plus R2 upon R1 plus I adjustable into R2. This is the single formula. What is asked in the question? Calculate the range of output voltage. Range means from minimum to maximum value. So for minimum, do remember R1 is fixed. What we can change? We can change only the value of R2 from minimum to maximum. So minimum value of R2 is zero. So to calculate minimum output voltage, I need to put R2 is equals to zero. If you put R2 equals to zero, so this becomes V reference, value of V reference is 1.25 in the bracket 1 plus 0 upon R1 240 
plus I adjustable that is 50 microampere so 15 to 10 raise to minus 6 50 microamperes means 15 to 10 raise to minus 6 into value of R2 R2 is again 0 so this term gets vanished similarly this term becomes 0 0 upon anything is 0 so 1.25 into 1 is 1.25 volt this is the minimum voltage so this is the minimum output voltage to calculate the maximum output voltage same technique we need to use what's the maximum value what will be the maximum value of r2 very simple it is 5 kilo ohm minimum is 0 maximum is given in the question that is 5 kilo ohm so in place of r2 i need to put 5 kilo ohm for second calculation so r2 is equals to 5 kilo ohm so 5 kilo ohm means 5 into 10 raised to 3 similarly here also I will be putting the value of R2 that is 5 kilo ohm 5 into 10 raised to 3 uh, kilo ohm means 10 raised to 3 ohms accordingly do the calculations so maximum voltage if you cal do the calculation on the calculator it is 27.54 volt keep in mind this should be in this range only then and then only your calculated answer is correct so we got the range 1.25 volt to 27.54 4 volt in this case. Likewise, if you just remember a single formula, you can uh, solve any numerical as well. Do remember this diagram. This is the diagram for solving the numericals as well as for general things related to LM317. Next is, how can you boost the current in case of LM317? See, as I said uh, earlier at the starting of this session, you don't have to mug up uh, extra diagrams. This was the earlier diagram which we used for solving the numerical. Same diagram I am referring to boost the current, to increase the current. I am connecting one extra register R3 at the input side. This was the uh, whatever diagram I have drawn with the black pen. It, it is the original diagram. These are the extra things. What I said, if you want to boost the current, connect one extra resistance R3 at the input side. This is input voltage and use one PNP transistor. If you use this circuit, remaining circuit, remaining working of LM317 is as it is. Only this extra PNP transistor will boost the current by the factor 1 plus beta. There is one concept that is known as low dropout. Actually, this is the disadvantage of LM317. So you should also know if asked in the exam, what is the disadvantage of LM317? Actually, for the proper functioning of LM317, there should be a difference of three volt between input and output. So this is the bare minimum requirement for LM317. Whereas for other ICs like uh, the ICs related to 7 and XX series, the uh, voltage required between voltage difference required be between input and output is usually one volt which is very less than that of this three volt requirement the last part of unit number three is SNPS switched mode power supply now this is the simple diagram of SNPS V in is unregulated input voltage this is a transistor which uh, where I have written switch it is known as electronic switch here we can use a transistor or a MOSFET which acts as a switch Pulse generator is applied at the base terminal of this transistor which is also known as a controlling signal and output of this switch electronic switch which is transistor in this case is given to the filter. Now depending on the requirement uh, see this pulses this type of pulses are produced by the pulse generator. This transistor is either operated in saturation mode or cutoff mode when the on pulse appears the transistor operates as switch on in the switch on mode that is in the saturation mode and in either another case it acts as a cutoff region that is in it will be switched off so whenever the transistor is switched on this switch is electronic switch is switched on then regulated unregulated input voltage is directly applied to the filter filter as the uh, name indicates filter out the ripples and uh, it produces a regulated output voltage this is the simplified diagram of SMPS which is switched mode power supply there are actually two types one is boost uh, and uh, boost SMPS that means it increases the output voltage and second is the buck SMPS so this is the generalized block diagram of SMPS Next is unit number four that is operational amplifier operational amplifier is abbreviated as op amp 
This is the block diagram of operational amplifier. You should know the block diagram. It's very simple. There are four major blocks. The first block is input stage. In case of op amp, later on I will explain you in detail. There are two terminals at the input side. One is positive, which is known as non-inverting terminal. Another is negative, which is known as inverting terminal of op amp. Presently, this input stage is basically DIPO, dual input, because there are two inputs and balanced output. Again, there are two outputs, so it is dual input balanced output stage. Its output is directly applied to the intermediate stage, which provides the sufficient gain to the signal. This is dual input unbalanced output because it has only one output. So this is dual input unbalanced output. These two stages combinedly provides the sufficient gain to the input signal, but they are directly connected. So the, the DC voltage will not be zero. To make the DC voltage level equals to zero, level shifter stage is used, which makes the input DC equals to zero. Last stage is the output stage. It provides the sufficient uh, gain to the output voltage as well as it is used to boost the uh, output current. So this is the generalized block diagram of operational amplifier. The next part is, I will explain you how to solve the numericals as far as the differential amplifiers are concerned. You might feel this is a tough numerical. It is not at all tough. You should not skip this part. Only few formulae you, to, you need to memorize. If you know, if you memorize this formulae, set of formulae, you will be in a position to solve any type of numerical related to this part. So let us discuss one numerical. Question is emitter biased dual input balanced output differential amplifier has. These are the given values of supply plus VCC and minus VE 10 volt. RC1, RC2, 2.7 kilo ohm. For your reference, I have drawn the diagram. Two transistors are used because it is a differential amplifier. Then RC1, RC2 values are given. RE, uh, emitter register is given, 5.6 kilo ohm. B values of beta S and beta DC are given. These are the transistor parameters basically. VBE, base to emitter voltage drop is 0.715 volt. It is asked to calculate voltage gain, input resistance and output resistance. As I mentioned, you need to just memorize this formula to solve any numerical related to differential amplifier. So IE is same as ICQ is VEE minus VBE upon 2RE. First, let us do the calculation of IE. This is the diagram which is fixed for any uh, emitter biased dual input balanced uh, output differential amplifier. So first part, I will calculate IE. We have the direct formula of IE. Do remember IE is same as ICQ. So IE is VEE minus VBE upon 2RE. Simply put the values. VE is given in the question. It is 10 volt minus VBE. Don't think it is negative or positive. More You need to consider value of more of that. Voltage. So minus VBE, it is 0.715 upon 2RE. Value of RE emitter register is given in the question. It is 5.6 kilo ohm. So 2 into 5.6 into 10 raised to 3 because it is given in kilo ohm. So I can multiply it by 10 raised to 3. If you solve this on the calculator, the answer of IE will be 0.829 milliampers. That is uh, into 10 raised to minus 3 amperes. So it is 0 0.829 milliamperes. Now let us calculate value of small re. Formula to calculate small re is this formula. Vt is the thermal voltage. You need to remember this value. If, the, if it is not given in the question, like in this problem, it is not given. You should know the standard value of thermal voltage. It is 26 millivolt. So it is Vt that is 26 millivolt upon IE. Just to calculate RE, I have calculated IE. So put the values, it is 26 millivolt, that is 26 into 10 raised to minus 3 upon IE is 0.829 milliampere. So 0.829 milliampere means it is into 10 raised to minus 3 amperes. So this gets cancelled. If you solve this, you will get value of RE that is 31.36. Now next is, it is uh, first part it is asked to calculate the voltage gain just for references i mean uh, uh, ready references i have calculated ie and re now first calculation first calculation is to calculate voltage gain we have a ready made formula voltage gain ad formula number 4 is rc upon re value of rc is given in the question that is rc1 is same as rc2 which is 2.7 
kilo ohm so it is 2.7 into 10 raised to 3 upon value of re just now we have calculated it it is 31.36 so if you solve this on the calculator value of ad will be 86.09 second calculation it is asked to calculate the input resistance input resistance is ri so this is ri is equals to 2 beta ac into small re Simply you have to put the value, so it is 2 into beta AC is given in the question, that is 100 into RE, small RE, we have calculated 31.36, so do this simple calculation, this value will be 6.272 ohms. And last part calculation of output resistance RO, which is same as RC, so it is same as or uh, 2.7 value of rc is given in the question 2.7 kilo ohm that's it for this calculation so any type of numerical uh, can be solved if you just mem uh, remember this six form six basic formula what could be the possible variation see these three parts i have covered as well as i have shown the calculation of ie and re it can be separately asked to calculate ie as well as re small re i am talking about or the question can be like this calculate the operating point how do what does this mean operating point means you need to do the calculation of icq and vcq that's it so these are the possible variations as far as such type of numericals are concerned the next important part related to this is there are some open parameters the definition of these parameters are very very uh, important as far as this subject is concerned so wherever possible i will tell you the clue how to how you know, to memorize these definitions so first is open loop voltage gain notation is av it is the differential gain of op amp in open loop mode later on i will explain you there are two types one is open loop and closed loop presently as the name indicates it is open loop voltage gain so it is a differential gain in open mode very simple then input resistance equivalent resistance measured at inverting or non-inverting terminal there are two input terminals of the op amp one is positive which is known as non-inverting terminal another is negative which is inverting terminal so equivalent resistance measured at inverting or non-inverting terminal with other terminal connected to ground that means if you are measuring equivalent resistance at positive terminal uh, connect negative terminal to the ground and so on then output resistance very simple resistance at the output terminal when input terminal is short circuited this is important rather short circuit input terminal and measure the uh, resistance at the output terminal then input offset voltage basically offset voltage the notation is os it is the voltage whenever you are not actually applying external input voltage but there are small voltage present at the input terminal of op amp so it is small differential input voltage required to make output zero so some small value of input voltage is required which is which is necessary to make the output voltage zero it is input offset voltage next is output offset voltage notation is voos this os stands for offset v0 stands for output here vi stands for input so output voltage produced due to input offset voltage is known as output offset voltage very simple next is input bias current average of current flowing into two input terminals there are two input terminals inverting and non-inverting so if you take average of both the currents then that is known as input bias current notation is ib then input offset current again os indicates offset i i i is current small i at the base indicates it is input offset current so it is algebraic difference of current flowing in two input terminals of op amp if you take difference of currents between positive terminal and negative terminal that is uh, input offset current next cmr common mode rejection ratio you don't have to mug up this definition just remember this formula it is ratio of ad to acm a stands for gain d stands for differential ccm stands for common mode so it is the, how, how to write it in the exam if you know the formula it is ratio of differential gain to the common mode gain of an op amp similarly power supply rejection ratio psrr it is delta v ios as i mentioned many times ios stands for offset so delta is change change in input offset voltage v is voltage delta is change change in input offset voltage to 
delta V that is change in the supply voltage is known as power supply rejection ratio. So if you just know this formula, you can write this definition. And last very important uh, parameter is slew rate. It is the maximum rate of change of output voltage per unit time. So these are important parameters related to op-amp definition. The last part related to this unit is the concept of virtual ground. This is the symbol which is used to represent op-amp. IC number is written as 741. Uh, there are two input terminals for the op-amp. One is negative, another is positive. Negative terminal is known as inverting terminal. Positive terminal is known as non-inverting terminal. Plus VCC and minus V are the supply voltage connected to this IC. V0 is the output. Now consider this diagram. In this diagram, uh, the op-amp is connected in the inverting mode because negative terminal is inverting terminal and to this negative terminal through some resistance let us say this resistance is RA through some resistance voltage source VS is connected so it is known as inverting mode of operation of an op amp now voltage at negative terminal is marked as V2 voltage at positive terminal is marked as V1 but positive terminal of op amp that is non-inverting terminal is grounded that means ideally it is connected to zero VID represents difference between two input terminals of an op-amp. So, in this case, I can write VID as since it is a voltage difference, voltage at non-inverting terminal, that is positive terminal, minus voltage at negative terminal. So, it is V1 minus V2. Now, refer the formula of gain. Gain is basically output upon input. In this case, output is V0, input is VID. So, gain is V0 upon VID. From this equation, we can write VID is equals to V0 upon gain. But in case of op-amp, ideally the gain is infinity. So I will write it is V0 upon infinity. Now something upon infinity is 0. This equation gives VID is equals to 0. But VID is V1 minus V2. Therefore, I can write V1 minus V2 is equals to 0. Refer this diagram. Here V1 is connected to ground. Before that, I will write one more equation. V1 is equals to V2. V2 I have transferred to the RHS. Now V1 is connected to ground. That means ideally it is 0. And since V1 is equals to V2, the voltage V2 also becomes 0. Actually, this point is connected to the supply. Still, because of this concept, the voltage at negative terminal that is inverting terminal of op amp become zero since v1 is connected to ground this is known as the concept of virtual ground so that's it for this unit dear students for the next two units i'll be uh, creating separate video otherwise this video will be lengthy so consider this as a part one of the revision which is related to unit number three and four thank you thanks a lot